Okay, welcome Year 10s to this next video. Um, in it, I'm going to introduce you to something called a regression, and I'm also going to show you how we can um, fit a line um, to a scatter plot. It's called the line of best fit, um, and we're going to do that just using our own judgment, so using our own eyes. Um, so what I'll do to start off with is just mention that this page here in your notes I'm going to refer to shortly. I'm going to come back to it, so just skip over it for now. Um, that's, that happens to be the next one in in your booklet, but we're going to start here today with regression. So what regression um, is referring to is basically putting a line on your scatter plot and fitting that line in a in a position that's going to best fit the data. So it's going to best model the relationship that's happening between the EV and the RV. So fitting line to scatter plots means that what we want to see on the scatter plot is a linear relationship to start off with. So we wouldn't actually fit a straight line to some data if it wasn't actually linear. If we could see some curving um, in the scatter plot, that means we've got a non-linear relationship, which means a line wouldn't be appropriate for it. So this straight line model is going to be used on that relationship. And the reason we want to do that is we want to be able to make some predictions with that data. We want to make predictions with the relationship that we're seeing, um, perhaps to forecast what's going to happen in the future um, or just to uh, give, us, give us greater ability to analyse with the data that we have. So this, um, this, this whole, um, I guess, situation where you are fitting lines, we call that linear regression. So to start off with, because we're fitting a straight line, that means that we're going to be using uh, this form of a line. So y equals mx plus c. Um, of course, m here is our gradient and c is our y-intercept. So that will become important um, later on because um, we will be able to interpret those. Um, but for now, just a reminder that your y is your response variable and we call that RV, and the X variable is the explanatory variable, so the EV. And what that means as well is that when we write our, our equation, we actually won't write Y and X, we'll actually write whatever the value, or sorry, whatever the label is of the Y, y variable, or sorry, the RV, whatever the RV is, we'll write in place of Y, and whatever the EV is, we'll write in place of X as well. And I'll show you that with the example that we have. So there are a number of ways that you can actually fit this line. So there's different methods of regression. Um, the first that I'm going to show you in this video is by eye. So it's best to have a ruler for this, what's well, definitely essential in fact, to have a ruler. Um, it, is, it is best if it's a transparent rule, so if it's see-through. Um, but if you don't have that, then there's not, not to worry about it. Um, this is just one method. Um, and it actually gives rise to quite a few different answers because if I put my line in a particular place based on what I judge to be the best fit, that might be slightly different to what someone else does. Slightly different in it might differ by a few millimetres, but that, that can actually have an effect on the equation that I, that I generate for that line. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put a line on this particular scatter plot. Um, and you'll see here, um, I'm going to skip to a worked copy in a moment but you'll see that we've got just the dots at the moment and we can see that it's a positive association because the line the um the dots are drifting upwards and so what that means is i can try and draw a line that fits this data so say i went about there or i could have gone say through here or down there. The thing is, I want to try and balance this line. I want to try and put it in a place that does actually best fit the data. So what you want to try and do is if you've got lots of dots, say in a row, you can try and place the line through those dots. But then what you'll notice is these dots underneath that line are actually quite far away from it now. So I actually want to bring this down a little bit because at the moment it doesn't really fit where where I want it to. Um, it doesn't really fit um, a nice sort of middle, a middle ground between those dots. So what I might do is put it a little bit lower. So if I put it, say, through there, I've got 
three below, one, two, three, four, I've got five above, but what I want to try and do is just sort of position it as best I can. So I might just pop it there for argument's sake, just so that, whoops, just so that we can get moving with it. Um, but basically it is your judgment. Now, I obviously wouldn't put the line like up here. That wouldn't make sense because that's not really modeling the data very well. Likewise, I wouldn't really put it uh, down the bottom here. I want to try and position it so that I get a good feel for all of the data. So just uh, say I've got my line there. Um, what I want to do then is try and work out the equation of this line um, because the, I want the equation obviously to be able to make predictions um, so that I can basically read off coordinates of that line um, without sort of having to, to do it by estimation. So this technique of finding the equation for this line um, is going to use your calculator. So your first step in finding the equation is to actually just find two coordinates that lie on your line. Now this is really important. This is not two coordinates that are listed as data. So the dots, it's not the dots, it is the line itself. Now sometimes the dot will be on the line, so that's fine. But when you are finding the equation, the coordinates must be, in this case, I've got a red line, must be on that red line. Now, for this, I might just say, okay, this coordinate here looks like approximately, and sometimes you have to approximate, because this value here would be 150, since this is going up in fives. That looks like about 150 for x and 50 for y. Now, actually, I might move that a little bit. I don't really like where that is because it's a bit low so I'm just gonna oops a daisy move it up slightly yeah so that looks a little bit better and it's positioned a little bit better with the dots that we've got um, so now if I go again so 150 um, 55 so like that and another dot looks like about 195 75 So you only need two, and like I said, they have to be on the line. So I've got that one, and I've got this one. Now, the, fur the further apart they are, the better. That that's actually leads to more accuracy, which is why I've gone either end. But sometimes you can't really read off the, the coordinate very well. So in those cases, you want to just try and um, find something or something that you can approximate um, as best as possible. Now it says use CAS to find the equation, so I'm going to show you how to do that now. And you will notice on the previous page that there are ex, um, screenshots of what I'm about to do so that you can see you've got a record of how it's done. So just over the page again, back to these coordinates, I'm going to go to my calculator and I'm going to go to lists and spreadsheets. Now, we've used this before, but what we want to do is make sure you've got labels in there. So I've got X and Y labels. Now, to get the equation, your first step is to actually put your coordinate into this, um, this grid just here. So the first coordinate I had was an x value of 150 and the y value was 55. The second coordinate, the x value was 195 and the y was 75. So first step, get your coordinates into lists and spreadsheets with labels on x and labels on y. Then you need to press... Uh, press control and then I and then um, add data and statistics and what you'll do here is you'll click on the X variable and add X and you'll click on the Y variable and add Y. Now what you'll get there is your two points have been plotted. Now what we want to do is get the calculator to put a line through those two points. And when it does that, it's going to tell us the equation of that line. And that's going to match the equation, of course, of what you have on your scatter plot because it is two coordinates that also lie on your line. So to do that, we go first to menu and then you'll see number four is analyze. From analyze, you go down to number six, which is regression. And then you'll click on show linear MX plus B. Okay, there we have it. So that's our equation. Now we are, of course, going to round it off because we don't want to have to write all of those um, decimal places and it's not necessary either. The other thing you'll notice is over here it says uh, plus 
minus uh, plus negative 11.6, etc. So what you want to do is we don't write plus negative. We actually just write minus. So I'll show you in a second. This means that the rule looks like this. It's y equals 0. Point, now I'm going to go to two decimal places, so 0.44x. Now I'm not going to write plus negative 11.67 because that's the same as taking away 11.67. So there's our equation. Now, since we have variable names here, see how x is actually height and y is actually weight? What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this so that it uses the variables. So instead of writing y, I'll write weight because that's what is on the y-axis. And instead of writing x, I'm going to write height since that's what's on that axis. And now this is my final equation. So you'll notice here it actually said using the variables height and weight. So you must make sure you always use your variables rather than x and y. Okay, I'll show you another example then. Um, with this example, you first need to create the scatter plot. So what you could do here is pause the video and you can um, use the scale that's already been provided and finish off this scatter plot. To start off with, you do want to make sure you add your labels. So over here, test mark. Your test mark depends on the time that you spent studying. So that makes this time spent studying the EV. In other words, time spent studying might explain the mark that you get. That's in hours, so I'll put hours down there as well. And you'll notice I put percentage in the brackets. So pause the video and create the scatter plot for me, and then we're going to put the line on it. Okay, once you've got your scatter plot, it should look like this. And as you can see, a line has already put, been um, put through for me. Um, it's already been added on, so I'm going to use that line there. So that's um, been, been put on by I, so just the line of best fit. And from here, I want to create um, the equation of that line. So first step is to find two points that lie on your line. So what I'm going to do is you can use a ruler. But I'm going to maybe use um, this one here, which looks like about 252. And um, just get rid of this, remind me tomorrow. Um, this one here looks like what, 8, so remember on the line, 8.92. So again, try and do two points that are pretty far apart so that you can get some, um, some more accuracy. Okay, just going back to my other thing before so I can write on it. My two points were here. And now what I'm going to do is go back to my calculator and I'm going to get the equation. Now, since I had done this before with these two points, what I can do is I can go back to my list of spreadsheets and I can just change these points here. So 252 and 892 were my two points. Now, control I for data and statistics. I'll do what I did before, I'll add X, and then I will add Y. There they are. Just check I did that correctly, 252 and nine, whoops, I've got 992, so I've made an error here. It wasn't nine, it was eight. There we go. So if you make a mistake, just re-enter your variable and it will fix it for you. So 252, 892, that's better. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the line to that. So remember, it's menu, number four for analyze, six for regression, and then we want show linear, mx plus b. And there it is. Now, again, I've got lots of decimals there. So what I'll do is I'll round it off. I'll go to two decimal places again. Um, and the other thing I want to make sure I do is write it in terms of the variables. So First of all, the equation in my calculator came out like this, 38.67, but I have to use these variables. So I'll use test mark is my y, so test mark equals 
6.67 times by the x, which is time spent studying. So I might just shorten that to time studying, just so I can fit it in. And then we add 38.67. There we go. So there's our equation. Now from there we'll make predictions, but I'll use, um, I'll save that for another video. But um, what you need to be practicing is obviously creating the scatter plots by hand is important. Um, judging where to put that line, so roughly in the middle of the dots, try and balance it as best you can. And then creating um, this equation from that line. They're the key skills that we want to practice to start off with. And then um, in our next video, we'll, we'll look at making these predictions.